Welcome back, history enthusiasts. In today's captivating episode, we delve into the chilling story of Amon Goeth, a man infamous for his brutality and sadism during the darkest days of World War II. Prepare to uncover the shocking details of his reign of terror as the commandant of the Plasso concentration camp, his atrocities, lies, and humiliating execution. Let's get started. The future commandant, Goeth, born on December 11, 1908 in Vienna, the son of Berta and Amon Franz, received his unusual name in honor of his grandfather. Amon was the Egyptian god of fertility. According to beliefs, it was he who made the harvest plentiful and enabled humans and animals to reproduce. The fact that one of the greatest Nazi criminals was named after him sounds ironic. The brutality of the Austrian, portrayed by Steven Spielberg in the movie Schindler's List, was exceptional, even by the standards of the notoriously cruel SS. The SS leadership held a very high opinion of Goethe not only because of his pure Aryan blood. They appreciated his thorough education, brilliance, ability to judge situations clearly, and willingness to sacrifice for the cause. During World War II, he served as the commandant of the Plasso concentration camp near Krakow, Poland. Goth's role was to enforce Nazi policies, maintain control over the prisoners, and carry out orders from the higher-ranking officials. However, his actions went far beyond his assigned duties, plunging the inmates of Plasso into a living nightmare. Due to the Austrian's lack of conscience and exceptional consistency in his actions, he was tasked with coordinating the liquidation of the Krakow ghetto. Some incapacitated people were to be killed on the spot or sent to death camps. The rest were directed to Plasso as a workforce. The able-bodied people were evacuated. The elderly and sick were killed wherever they were found. The same fate befell the children from the infectious hospital. When one of the nurses pointed out that they couldn't be released onto the streets because they might get infected, the patients were shot in the beds they lay in. About 2,000 people were executed on the spot, and the same number were sent to death camps. And the commandant could already say the next day that he had carried out his assigned task without objections. In 1943, Goth assumed command of the Plasso concentration camp, succeeding the previous commandant, Julian Scherner. Plasso, originally established as a forced labor camp, was transformed into a place of unspeakable suffering under Goth's leadership. Situated on the grounds of two former Jewish cemeteries, the camp encompassed an area of approximately 77 acres and held thousands of prisoners, primarily Polish Jews. Goth's command at Plasso was characterized by sadism and a complete disregard for human life. He reveled in the power he wielded over the prisoners, systematically subjecting them to physical and psychological torment. Goth was notorious for his ruthless and arbitrary acts of violence, frequently carrying out public executions to instill fear among the inmates. His sadistic nature knew no bounds, as he derived pleasure from inflicting pain and suffering upon his victims. Despite the Nazi regime's efforts to suppress information about the atrocities committed at Plazo, survivors emerged with chilling testimonies of their experiences under Goth's command. These first-hand accounts provide harrowing details of the daily horrors endured by the prisoners. Survivors recount instances of brutal beatings, random acts of violence, starvation, and the constant fear of death that permeated the camp. Among the prisoners of the labor camp, Amon Goth instilled terror simply through his appearance. Tall and fit, he left no hope of survival for the people. Once, during the construction of buildings in Plasso, one of the prisoners, architect Diana Ryder, noticed that the foundations were done incorrectly. According to her, they were too shallow. She decided to explain this to the commandant because, as a specialist, she knew that the newly erected barrack would simply collapse. The man listened to what she wanted to say and then ordered her to be shot on the spot. Later, he ordered the construction to be done according to her instructions. One of the most horrifying aspects of Amon Goss' reign at Plasso was the widespread use of mass shootings and public executions. Goth regularly ordered the execution of prisoners, often as a form of entertainment for himself and his subordinates. In the camp's punishment square, prisoners were subjected to sadistic punishments, including floggings, beatings, and torture. His hunts for Jewish prisoners, who worked too slowly, became famous. The commandant had a terrible habit, as depicted in Spielberg's film. In good weather, he would go out without a shirt. He would appear with binoculars in one hand and a sniper rifle in the other. With a cigarette in his mouth, he calmly observed the prisoners, who were several hundred meters away from his house, pushing heavy carts loaded with limestone. Anyone who, according to Goeth, did not work energetically enough would be immediately shot. Goth's sadism extended beyond physical violence. 
He derived pleasure from psychologically tormenting the prisoners, using fear, intimidation, and humiliation as tools of control. Random acts of violence, threats of death, and the constant uncertainty of survival inflicted severe mental anguish on the inmates, pushing many to the brink of despair. Like many Nessus, especially those working in German camps, Goethe felt no pity, even towards children. It seems that he derived exceptional satisfaction from sending them to their deaths. The cruelty he displayed in his behavior could reach unimaginable limits. When groups of children were sent to death camps, their mothers were forced to stand still and silent while their offspring were taken away, heading towards death. Goethe ordered the camp orchestra to play children's songs during this time. The killer from Plasso tried to conceal the scale of his criminal actions. He even ordered the digging up and burning of the bodies of the murdered prisoners in the camp. Not everything could be removed, and human bones are still found in these areas to this day. It is also known that over 8,000 people died in the camp. Finally, the end of his horrifying career came. On September 13, 1944, Goethe was arrested by the RSA, the Reich Main Security Office. He couldn't explain the origin of the 80,000 marks found in his apartment in Vienna. They serve as evidence that he had looted Jews. A psychopath was imprisoned, but soon he was released due to his health condition. He had diabetes. He certainly hoped to escape accountability not only for theft, but also for genocide. When in 1945 he gave false name to American soldiers, they didn't let themselves be deceived. The former commandant of Plasso stood before a polished tribunal. In the trial, held in late August to early September 1946, he was sentenced to death by hanging for his role in the Holocaust and the atrocities committed at Plasso. The sentence was pronounced on September 13, 1946 in Krakow. The verdict represented a significant moment of justice for the victims and survivors of Goth's sadistic regime. The cruelty of Amon Goth can never be justified. He himself explained that in his childhood, he didn't receive enough attention from his parents. He also lost two children from his first and second marriages. However, it seems that it was not personal tragedies that deeply affected him. The remaining children, the ones who were still alive, the defiant Nazi didn't even bother to visit them. His crimes, along with those of other Nazi war criminals, emphasize the importance of remembrance and education to prevent such horrors from happening again. Remembering the victims and survivors of the Holocaust and honoring their stories is crucial in fostering tolerance, understanding, and the preservation of human rights in the face of hatred and oppression. In conclusion, the terrible execution of Amon Goth represents both a significant act of justice and a reminder of the atrocities committed during the Holocaust. Examining his life, reign of terror at Plasso, and the subsequent trial and execution provides invaluable insights into the profound impact of his crimes on the lives of countless individuals and the collective memory of humanity. Thank you for joining us on this historical adventure. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more captivating stories from the past. Until next time,